It took years for your work in Glasgow to actually prove real effect. Um, what kept you going, though, for those first many years? I met so many victims' families because, of course, I'm working with probably the worst circumstances. So I have families who've lost sons or daughters. And I think there's an experience of that. People always say to me, you must get used to it. I never get used to it. And there's that bit that you know you could have prevented that tragedy because it goes on for decades. People never go over a homicide, never. And I suppose that's what kept me going, you know, because you only experienced a little bit of their pain and you knew it could be different. So it's always, you always bring yourself back to base principles whilst it's really difficult. For us, as people who are trying to change the system, it's nothing like as difficult it is for those families and for the people who are, you know, involved in, you know, with the violence, etc. So I suppose it's been a bit of a, it's, it's a bit of a mission for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, how did you have this feeling that I know this can be different because things didn't really change for the first years? No, they didn't. I. Do you know, it's, it, because it's been such a long time, you know, 16, 17 years we've really been working on this, it's strange thinking back. I think because I wasn't really enmeshed in the culture, firstly, I was a woman in a very male-dominated area. I mean, very male-dominated. I would regularly sit around a table and I would be the only woman in 50 men. So you were always slightly an outsider anyway. I had a very different background because I had health and, and a different background. So, in a way I was an outsider because of my gender and because it was a long time ago and policing and policing was quite unreconstructed at that time. And in a way that these negative circumstances gave me a chance to sort of be able to think a wee bit different because I wasn't involved in the same conversations that everybody else was. And in a way there was a bit of groupthink. Mm. You know, people thought the same way about about violence because we were so good at detecting murders. Mm -hmm. I mean we had a 98% detection rate and and it was a sense of pride for people. And and I think I you know I was like, how's that something to be proud of? So I I suppose that's where it came from, a sort of sense of otherness. Mm. But also a desire to make a difference to something. Mm. You're mentioning this thing about being an outsider. Um, is it important to maintain this outsider perspective? Oh, absolutely. I think you always need to be looking at, even the work that I do now, I, I still look at it and think, what else could this be? You know, how could we improve it? Which is why I sometimes like, you know, areas in Canada have, have replicated lots of the work that we've done. And when I see them in Canada and they've improved it and I think, oh, that's amazing. And then it creates that virtuous circle mm -hmm. that you think, I should have tried that. Or somebody else comes up with a different idea and you think, oh, that's, you know. So I really like that process of change that's, but that puts us someone at the heart of it. You know, we really think about what does success look like to this person? How do we involve them in the decision making? And then how do we change a, you know, a city and indeed a country? And there is something that's really quite exciting about that. Looking back uh, over these past 17 years, what would you say was sort of the turning point where you said, oh yeah, this is really working. This is not just my belief, this is yeah. real change. I never ever look at short term figures, ever. You know, I mean, you know, some of the metrics that, you know, police forces and, and other services use is more about activity. Mm -hmm. So they'll measure, you know, waiting targets or, you know, we measure some crime figures. But you need to look at long-term trends. And also you need, to, you know, I, I go out into communities very often and it's when the communities say to me, things are changing here. Because it takes longer for them to say that, you know. They're not looking at crime figures and in a way they don't believe the crime figures. Because they're so used to being, not lied to, but they've got a mistrust of figures. I think there's that old saying that if you torture statistics enough, it'll confess to almost anything. Mm. So you get it in the media particularly, you know, some say it's good and some say it's bad. When they started to tell me things were changing, that they felt a difference, that they felt they could go out at night, they were, you know, they felt safer in their, their areas, that's when I thought change was really happening. But that was really five, six years. You know, and it's a long time to think, you know, this is, you know, because you're thinking, 
am I doing the right thing? And we always used to come back, look at the data, look at the evidence, and then question ourselves, are we going in the right direction? You know, but you have to fix this whilst it's moving. So we had to do the things that were immediate, you know, so we still needed to investigate crime and whatever. But at the same time, we were really focusing on prevention. Mm. Mm. And that's quite a, you know, it's a nice thing to, a nice place to be. Yeah. You explained uh, <clears throat> yesterday that you were saying the sort of the, the game changer, if I can use mm. that term, was when you changed the question, what's wrong with you, yeah. to what's happened to you. you. Can yeah. you say a little bit? About so it was more mainly really about, we often just look at behaviour and then we want to punish it. And that's what the criminal justice system is really based on. But for so many people, you know, so kids who were acting badly at school, who were then excluded, you know, to, you know, I mean, I have people who, you know, who, who become, who've got problems with alcohol and addiction, etc. And there's always that thing, you know, I mean, why don't you just stop? And when we moved, when we really had a really, a big understanding around trauma, around all the adverse childhood experiences that happen to people being brought up in domestic abuse, their parents are in prison, you know, an addiction, uh, you know, where there's emotional and sexual abuse, that shapes you. And in a way it's a, whilst there are no excuses for crime, there are lots of reasons. Mm. And, and it was that what's happened to you. And, and trying to unpick that and think, well, what can we then put in place to make sure your life becomes better and not worse? that we go in a process of redemption and to say to people, which was something we never said was, tell me what a good outcome is for you. Because we were, you know, we were putting our own values onto them and we needed to really involve them in this, the decision making. And that was, that was a big change. And it's now a huge movement in our schools around trauma informed practice, around trying not to look at the behavior of some of our young people as something abhorrent, but as a symptom of something else that's happening. Mm. And any sensible, thoughtful society would take that on and then act on it. Mm. What did it take for you personally to make these changes happen? Oof. I always think there's two people in life. There's those that take themselves seriously and those that take their job seriously. I take my job seriously. I try not to think, I, I try not to take some of the criticism personally. Um, often when I'm dealing with people who've got a different opinion, I try and see things as they are and not as I am. Because it helps to give me perspective, but I have learnt so much over the last 16 years. I mean, I'm a completely different person now mm. from at the beginning because in a way when you think you've got a vision about where you want to go and you think, we could really change this. And you're in front of someone who's saying, listen, that will never change. Mm. It's incredibly frustrating. The first person that we went to see in um, the prison service, we went to him and I mean, very, he was very senior and, it, and we said, we want to do violence reduction. And his, his words to me, and I'll never forget them, was it's too big, don't bother. And he gave us a cup of tea and a biscuit and we never went back to see him. Mm. Because he was so up against it, he felt that you couldn't change. And we needed to find the positive architects the positive people around who thought, no, you're right. So we had this coalition of the willing. Mm. And it's been so important over the years to try and find more and more and more of those. Mm. And focus on the people. And who focus on the people on who page. think. Yeah. Mm. And, and as you get more successful, that group grows and grows and grows. And they suddenly become the in-group because they're the ones that think, of course you can change. And the ones that think you can become that out-group. Mm. And they're opinions in a way seem, I don't know, ga gain less traction mm. Mm. as the years go on. Mm. But does it take, do you have to be really stubborn or really yeah. brave or what does it sort of take to? I think it takes everything. I, you're right, I think you need to be really stubborn, you need to be really resilient. Mm. I mean, I, I always say that resilience is probably, if you want to achieve change, there are only three things that you need to have and it's resilience, resilience, and resilience. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes quickly. Mm -hmm. So any idea that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna change anything on any sustainable way in a very short period of time is pointless. And so that's why I've always, I've always talked about staying in the job that I did for a long period of time. 
because I needed to see it through the times when it was really good and the times when it was really bad. So often people think, you know, when you've achieved a success, people then move on. And you know, people say, oh, that was great. But you don't see it around the, you know, through the bad times. And I think there is a cycle of change that you need to be consistently involved with it. And so I, I suppose that's, you know, is resilient. But it has, it's been, inc it's incredibly tough at times. Mm. And there are times when you question yourself. Am I doing the right thing? Mm. Am I going in the right direction? And I think it's helpful to have people who hold different opinions from you around so you can talk it through. Mm. Because if you just speak to people who agree with you, mm. I mean, that's just an echo chamber. Mm. So sometimes it's, it's useful to speak to people who hold alternative views and, and talk through your ideas. Mm. So I've always had critical friends around me as well.